I'm Johnny Scoville, and this is Chase the Heat. I thought it would be a good day to do a live stream. This is day three in a row. This is how habits start. But five years of sobriety, and I thought it would be good to connect with you guys right now. Be good. Chill, chilly Phil, you're about you're about to have your one year. It's pretty proud of you, dude. Rick Spicer, good to see you, man. Live your best life. I'm trying. Uh, it's been a red hot minute since you caught a live show. I'm glad you're here today, Phil. I want to see the coin. It's pretty, it's a beautiful coin, man. My friend, man, Damon's a good guy. Uh, this is the side that has the logo in five years. And it's a 1942 Walking Liberty half dollar. But it's absolutely beautiful. I don't know what to do about it. I don't know whether I should carry it. If I lost it, I'd be d devastated. You know what I mean? And I think to myself, well, I would never lose it. You know how many guitar picks I've lost? Have any idea? A stunning number. Midnight show. Thank you for being here. Dizzy Dragon, Balaki, Clayton Collins, good to see you. Galactic Yachts. Peg City Peppers, good to see you, man. Robert Springs, hello. Kristen Melinda, thanks for being here. Thank you so much. I love the wind chimes, too. Andrew, good to see you. I'm from NZ. Jimbo Slice, hello. Thank you. Noah Wright, thank you. Five years, man. What is five years? You know, it's 1,800 and what is it? 1,826 days or something like that. Here's the app I use. It's called I Am Sober. And it says it's uh, 100, uh, 1,827 days. They said I've saved $14,616. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Margarita. Margarita. Excuse me. Good to see you. Dilrod, hello. Lisa White, thank you. Bizzle, I love you, dude. Your mom needs to do more. You want to hear something funny? I need to ask your guys' opinion about the mom video. We shot that twice. The first one, I counted. We, we watched it first six times. She leans way into the picture and, and dips a uh, pretzel into it. And I'm sitting with her going, there's one, there's two, there's three. Do you guys think I should post that? I don't know if I should. Friday's one year for Chili. Phil. That's awesome, dude. The first year. I was really psyched. My first year was a big deal, man. I remember it. It was yesterday. It was a super big deal. Kiss Freak, bro. Good to see you. It was pretty exciting. It's funny. It's one of the, you know, birthdays. When you get older, you know, it's like, oh, my God. Brother, you get older. But sobriety birthdays are so different. They're like, ah, I got a year coming up. It's pretty cool. No, right. As someone who lost a family member from drug and alcohol abuse, it hurts like hell. I'm sorry. It sure does hurt, you know, and I wish I had gotten sober sooner. I got so the birds are all over. The minute I turn the camera on, the sanctuary comes to life. Like they know they're safe. I swear to you. When I'm I, when I walk around without the camera, they're like, keep an eye on me. You can't love me more, Bizzle. Charlie Mullins, good to see you. Hello, Mary. Hello, Philip Emery. Good to see you. My mom's adorable. Uh, she's a trip. Uh, you know, poor woman. Yeah, think about it. She's a, she's a sweetheart, but she she. Imagine being the mom to me and Tommy. I don't think you can imagine the poor what, poor thing. Uh, Jeremiah Long, COVID council, three years off drinking every day. Couldn't drink after COVID system. Wouldn't take it. Got lucky. Um, you know what? I uh, it was weird. Twice, I download the I Am Sober app. That's what it's called, the I Am Sober app. It's this one. In case you want to download it, it's the one right above the uh, – uh, where is it? Right. It's right above YouTube Studio, right above my Bible app. Right there is what it looks like, okay? I Am Sober. And the first time I did it, I ended up drinking like four or five days later. and felt so guilty looking at the app on my phone. I'm going to delete it. That twice. The last time, that was it. 
Don't miss it. I really don't. Um, I'm better sober. You know, I think about the things that have happened since I got sober. That's amazing. Drew V, good to see you, dude. Thank you for being here. Listen, man, I know, but Bizzle. Bizzle gives me a hard time because of my iPhone. You know the weird thing about iPhone? Like the iPhone is wicked intuitive to me. Super easy for me to use the iPhone. Max, to see you. Made alive. How cool. So uh, it's this week, uh, the end of the week, Saturday. I'm, I'm going to be leaving. I'll still be making videos, but I won't be making them here. I'm, uh, you ever see the movie? What's the movie with uh, James Conn? Misery. Remember Misery? He goes off into, I think, New England, to cabin to write a, wood, write a book. It's his a a legs broken. It's sort of a drag. Think that without the legs broken. And think summertime instead of wintertime. And that's what's happening. Here's what it's like. It's like a... Uh, this is the way I look at it. It's 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 just a mental marathon. Just got to sit down and do it. Um, I agree with you, Noah. I agree with you 100%. It's a great milestone, uh, just me being me. It's exciting, you know what I mean? It's like, here's the weird thing about sobriety that I found. I don't know. I can't speak for everybody, but this is what I found. Like when I quit drinking. Like I was, I, I, and I wasn't like tanked the night before. I just decided that morning I wasn't going to do it anymore. You know what I mean? But I was obviously more sober that day than I was the day before. But two days later, I was more sober. And that process, I think I'm over getting sober. I think I'm pretty sober. But that took a long time. It, it, you know, it took a long time. It was interesting. Yeah, Kristen, I'm not going to get my legs broken. I think I'm pretty safe. You know, it's an easy, it's, um, I want to make it exciting and interesting, but it's like I've written 14 screenplays and a couple of them are based on true stories, but most of them I just made stuff up. It's a storyline. I, I create a storyline. I make up the characters. Like this guy's name is John. And I mean, I know where he went to school, what kind of car he drives, you know, how, what his relationship with his wife, you know what I mean? And all this is in my dome before I even start writing. And that is mental gymnastics. You got to create stuff. You're creating stuff that doesn't exist. You know what I mean? But this is simple. This I'm just writing something that it's just telling a story. I just got to figure out exactly the best way to tell it. And that's the thing. 20 subscribers away from 300. We can't have that. People, there are 36 people in this right now. Let's all hit the like button or touch it gently, fondle it, tickle it. Do what you got to do to that like button. More people will watch this. And we're going to have everybody go over to Chili Phil. Chili Phil, put your uh, link in the description box. Or if, if we need somebody with a wrench, somebody with a wrench, see if you can stick uh, his link in the description box. See if we can get you to 300, man. Noah says it's super cool to be able to get responses from you like this. Feels like we're all just one-on-one -on -one in person with you. That's the idea, dude. We are. Those other people, props. It's just you and me, Noah. Come on, dude. No, that's the whole thing. Is I look, I like, I don't know. From the very beginning, the very first video, I kind of just kind of look into the camera and pretend I, you know, I'm talking to you. I was talking to Kristen that time, but you, all of you, I'm talking to you. Yeah. Just me being me. I had to go to the hospital. And I quit hallucinating. I'm able to eat. Didn't expect to go through that. I was really fortunate. I just I didn't have anything like that. It's really weird. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to explain it. Um. Andrew, boy, you know what? Chip away at it. You know, you're, you're working on it. It's a lot to – here's the thing. One thing, you know, you'll find – I don't know. I, again, this is just me. The minute you quit a substance, you're like, all right, what else can – my, my life is in disarray. What else can I fix? And you get into the fixing mode. I did that. I you know, like, like, I, like I'm trying to fix things. I know – like every person that fights in the UFC knows exactly where their weakness is, and they're terrified that the guy in the ring – or the woman in the ring, whatever, knows where their weakness is. And they do. Well, I know where my weaknesses are. I absolutely know where they are. And, and beating that and, and all the other things I've beaten kind of makes me feel like, well, you know what? What else do I need to fix? 12 million scope gusher. Chili Phil, that's pretty bold. What's good gateway sauce uh, for Hellfire? Um, 
Most of the green sauces are pretty decent for uh, zombie snot's good. Um, it depends on what you want to put it on. Like, I don't know. Anything on their lower end of the scale, you can go to their website and check them out. But everything I, uh, from them is good. And if you use uh, Chase the Heat right now, you get a 10% discount. Cy Rock, the man, the myth, my friend. Good to see you. Did I miss you? Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Noel Wright says, what's the – I'll answer this. Why not? Uh, Noel Wright says, what's the latest info on Pepper X sauce? What's the highest it ranked in Scoville? 61,000 and change. Also love your buddy on Kabulka. He's great. Yeah, you know, it's a good sauce. You know, it is what it is. I tasted something that wasn't on the ingredient list. Maybe it's just me. I could be wrong. But I knew it wasn't hot. It wasn't hot. And it's okay if they didn't say it was hot and print things on the label that would lead you to believe it was. Someone is going to eat that and go, ah, I can handle 2.4 million. And they're going to get a hold of a 2 million Scoville tincture and try that and get their lid blown off their head. It won't kill them, but they'll be angry as can be thinking, how is that possible? It is what it is. It really is what it is. Bruce Cook, good to see you. When I get sober, when I got sober, I went to fix everything I had neglected in my home for the past few decades. Maybe carpet paint. Yeah. So, well, see, yeah. And I remember times like, like alcohol was the most recent one to quit. Which is just, it isn't, you know, how expensive was it? But there have been times where I had like a couple hundred dollar a day habit. And if you think it, like a couple hundred bucks for your habit ain't nothing. But if you had to go buy, spend 50 bucks on a shirt, you're like 50 bucks. Are you crazy? But your habit, nothing. Doesn't It's not even real money. It's weird. I know how that is though. So right before this video, I did a, uh, a tink video. Did some tincture of Tom uh, Broom's Omega tincture and play guitar for a while. Really burned myself. You know, here, I'll tell you the truth. I did I did a drop and I was playing this new little riff I'm working on. I started playing it and I made a mistake early on. I was like, oh no, I gotta start over. So I did another drop. So it took like four takes for me to get it right, which is crazy because usually stuff that I write, I can play really easily. It's other stuff, people like learning something somebody else has written is harder for me. But. So I think I might, but I'm still feeling it in my gut from just four or five drops. Jane Alders, thank you, Mama Scoble, for participating in the video. And Johnny, thank you for sharing your anniversary. Five years is a big deal. You do tremendous outreach uh, to folks who need encouragement or aid. You know what, Jane? Thank you for saying that. We all need aid and we all need love and we all need encouragement. You know what the word encourage means? It means to give courage. So when you encourage somebody, you're literally giving them courage. You got this. You're giving them courage. So it's, we can all encourage somebody. We all need it. I need it. We all need it. You know, Lord Kiss Freak Tincture is no joke at College Boys Fud Collection. Yeah, <laughs> it'll do it. Anytime you can take something and do one drop, it makes you talk funny. That's special. Galactic Yachts, how hot would you say doomed is compared to fresh pods? I've never tried extract, but enjoyed fresh chocolate primatized in the past. Got a bottle in the mail. I'm kind of nervous. You should be. It's a wicked hot sauce. I don't think I've ever had a hot a pepper. I have never had a pepper that burned me as bad as a spoonful of that. There. True story, man. Not one. I've had some scream. I had all the hot peppers there are. Do, uh, wait, doomed or double doomed? You said doomed, didn't you? Uh, I'm thinking double doomed. I have to go back and try doomed again. You're still going to be hard pressed in finding a pepper hotter than doomed because there's extract in it. You know what I mean? It just burns different. Hurts you. Burns you like it, you took its lunch money when it was a kid. It grew up, it got big, and you're small. It's like, that's the kid who took my lunch money, and it's coming after you. That's how it burns you. It's brutal. Uh, TCJNZ86. Definitely know what you mean about money. Uh, man, what happened? Um, money, not uh, not meaning anything when it comes to habits, not wanting to spend money on other things. It's true. I remember, yeah, I remember when I first started partying, I was a, a bellhop at a hotel in this hotel in Vermont, and I was scoring every day from or weekly from this a waitress or, yeah, waitress. Every kid in the town worked there. So you just you pick whatever fit your personality and, and you applied there. And I was buying my herb from her on a weekly basis. And one day I went to her and I had a handful of money. And I went down and she looked at me and she had this, like a little kid lost in a grocery store look on her face. And I said, what's wrong with you? 
And she said, it's, it's gone. And I said, what's gone? She goes, all of it's gone. There's nothing. It's the, it's the drought. I said, what are you talking about? She goes, there's... And there was a drought. And I mean, there was a drought so bad that they had, I had a shirt that said, I survived the great pot famine of 1987. I'm not making this up. And uh, she said to me, money will get you through times without weed. Then weed will get you, or no, weed will get you through times without money. Better than money's going to get you through times without weed. Pretty happy that I'm sober now, but that's what it reminded me of. Um, John Hopp, I got hooked on alcohol and opiates from 17 to 20 years old. I'm 38 and I'm 18 years sober as of last week. Wow, John, that's awesome. Good for you. You figured it out early. Proud of you, man. I remember my first day of sobriety more than my wedding anniversary. Wow. Well, look at what you were quitting. Alcohol and opiates, the first day of sobriety. I quit those things, man. You know, quitting opiates is a nightmare. The last time I did it, it was the strangest. I did it a bunch of times. The last time I did it, I was taking them by the book, man. I was getting, a, I was prepping for a back. So I had a really bad back, like bad back. When the doctor came in, I didn't know my back was broken. He goes, he comes in, he goes, sit still. When'd you break your back? I said, I didn't break my back. He goes, you broke your back and your neck. He goes, you have the back of a 70 year old athlete. That's what he said to me. But uh, I was getting ready for the surgery and I could barely walk. I was in so much pain. I was dying and I was taking, it wasn't even Perk 30s. What was it? It was Perk 30s. It was Percocet, I think. But um, I was taking Percocet and it was it was one to one to two every four hours as needed for pain. That's what I was doing. I wasn't going for the buzz. I was just trying not to shoot myself. It was bad. It was a really dark, dark time for me. So I was taking one or two at a time. And all the times I had been addicted to things in the past is because I was running at it. I was just like, this is my thing now. This, I wasn't going at it like that. This, this was just for pain meds. You know what I mean? So I uh, went through one month of these prescriptions. I had the surgery. I had it in Phoenix, ironically enough, pretty close to where I'm at now. And I, uh, before the surgery, though, no, I had the surgery. I came back and I had like a half a bottle of pills left. And I was taking them because the surgery was over, starting to feel a little bit better. And uh, I was leaving because I just got a new gig out of town. And I, I was driving by. I wasn't even, I'm not the kind of guy who's going like, to drive in and say goodbye to a doctor who's been helping me. But it was right on the way. I thought, you know what? There's my doctor. He's been pretty cool to me. So I'm going to go in and say goodbye to him. So I walked in and I said, hey, dude, I'm leaving. I, just wanna, I don't even know why I did this, but I just want to say goodbye. Thanks for helping me. And he looked at me. He's like, what are you going to do? I said, well, I got a job. We're, I'm all set. I got a gig. It's a company I used to work for. They're moving me out there. So I'm all set. And he goes, no, not about your job, about the pills, about the I said, what pills? I didn't know what he was talking about. I said, what pills? He goes, the, the pills you're, you're taking. He goes, you're addicted. I said, no, I'm not. And the reason I said that, because in the past, my past life, every time I was addicted to something, because I was partying my skull off on it. You know what I mean? I, like, no kidding, I'm addicted. But I wasn't partying at all. I was just taking the drugs because I, like the way he told me. And I mean, sometimes I wasn't even taking two. Sometimes I only needed one. I wasn't wailing on him. You know what I mean? So he goes, uh, he goes, oh, no, you're addicted. I said, you're, I'm not addicted. He goes, when was the last time you took one? I said, this morning. But I flushed him. I'm good. He goes, you're, you'll be sick. I said, I'll be fine. Thanks anyway, though. But have a good time. Take care. He goes, good luck with your job. And he watched me walk out of his office. And at the time, I thought, man, this guy's crazy. I went home. I was in my apartment that night. I was sitting around. And my mother called me. And she goes, I'm driving right by you. And you want to swing by the store with me? And I, she was going to uh, – Coles. I'm like, I don't need them, but if you just want company, I'll, I'll hang out with you. So I, I went with my mom. So we went, and as we were walking into Coles, it's the strangest thing. I, I started yawning. And if anybody's ever quit an opiate, got the yawns, and it was, and I started kind of feeling a little body ache. I went, oh crap, because I'd been there before, and I was just like, oh no, that dude was right. And I had like, I think I had two weeks before I took the job because they were letting somebody go and they were, you know, so I had two weeks before they were flying me and I uh, locked myself in my apartment. I didn't go to the door and I was, it was, that was the last time I, I, I quit opiates and, and man, when I say that's the last time, I mean, dude, that was the last time. I'm not fooling. Oh, I, I, I take aspirin now. And even aspirin, I'm like, just give me one. Any tips on growing a Viking beard? 
Uh, Z, you know what's really funny? You asked that this morning. I took a picture of my Viking beard in the. Sh it, let me see how long it is. I'm not gonna show you because I'm not wearing anything. I'm not wearing a. Sh I'm just wearing a towel. But it's down to here now. Like when it's not wrapped up, it's down to about there. I don't know if you can tell, but it's wicked. What happens is I, I braid it, and then I slide a bead up, and then wrap it around the upper portion. You know, here's the deal. I've been growing it forever. You got. I don't know what kind of gig you got. Like I have a gig. You don't need to. I don't need to, no one's going to say, do shave your face. You look like a, like a I don't know, don't shave it. You know what I mean? I don't know. Some people just can't grow beards. I have a friend who can't grow a beard. Every time he sees me, he's like, ah, oh, I wish I could do that. Like, Here's the thing. When you start shaving, I remember being a kid wanting to shave. If you sit around me and you're real quiet, you can hear the hair on me grow. You guys remember a little while ago, I, I went and got waxed. That didn't last. I, my, I you can hear the hair grow on me. I'm a caveman. I'm, I'm I'm like Neanderthal. It is what it is. You know, it is what it is. I you know, and being a YouTuber doesn't help because I sleep when I'm tired. I eat when I'm hungry. You know what I mean? So love the goatee. Thank you, Midnight Show. Thank you. I dig it. I dig it now. But you know, I've had I've had moments where I'm like, oh, I hate this thing, but. I had it for, for a while. It was really long. Like right before I moved from Fort Mill, I cut eight inches off it one day, eight inches off that thing. Uh, Andre Morgan just celebrated three months, but five years as a presser brother. Love the videos and the channel. Just don't know how you handle the heat. You do I'm broken and damaged and they can't take me back. It's too late. Andre, congratulations on three months. You can do it, man. Stay strong. And somebody else said they were doing some, was it Zach D? I read it, but couldn't. Yep. Uh, I'm on one year without alcohol. Congrats. Well, I'll tell you what. Jacob Dethridge is here. I'm chasing hide, chasing the heat. That's why. I you know what's really funny? It's one of the reasons I named the channel the channel. Because I chased the dragon. I did it for a long time. It's not a lot. You know, I don't hide it from anybody. I've told you guys before. It is what it is. And I'd rather chase the heat. It's safer. It's healthy. It brings people together. It doesn't drive people away. It's legal. And man, oh, man, it's a good time. Uh, still working on a show. Yeah, you know, I have some interesting things going on right now. I have uh, two powerhouses that are helping me. Like, I can't tell you their names because it would give away a little bit of stuff going on. Zach D gifted a membership. That is the kindest thing. And Body Illusion, you got it. What a cool thing to do, Zach D. Thank you for doing that. Um, I don't know what I was saying. Lost my, but, yeah, I, I will definitely be there. I promise you that. Um, what made me stop drinking five years ago? I just stopped working graveyards after 15 years and a big time daily boozer for longer than I like to admit. Definitely needed to cut back or stop. Um, I was drinking all the time, just all the time. That's what I was doing. I was like, it wasn't even like I was getting hammered. You know what I mean? But it was like being a YouTuber is scary because you know, you got to have, you got to have discipline because there's no one telling you, Hey man, you know what I mean? You got to work today. I mean, I work every day. I don't take days off. I work really hard. That's why the you know channel does well. But you know, I like I was at a. I, I remember I was at a. Uh, I was at Dallas Zest Fest, and shh, that's hot. It's a company, Shane and Shelley. Well, I was ordering. It was like, it was funny. It was like, you know, the show opens at nine o'clock. All the vendors are there at like eight, seven thirty-eight, setting up, and it's like seven thirty in the morning, and. Dude walks up and has me a Bloody Mary. I'm like, when in Rome, baby. We're in Rome. So I had a Bloody Mary. That's like, it's 730. We're not even close to opening the show yet. I'm like, you know what? One of the Bloody Marys. So I went over to the bar. And the bartender has back to me. And he was doing something, cutting limes or something. And he looked over his shoulder, saw me, but didn't see me. He saw there was somebody there, but didn't look at me. He goes, what do you have? I said, a Bloody Mary. So he turns around and goes, dude, your money's no good here. And he made a Bloody Mary. And he goes, your money's no good here. You know that. And as he did that, Shane from Shh, That's Hot walked up and grabbed my butt. I went, I swear it's a funny story because I didn't know who I, I stood. There, I said, that's got to be you, Shane. And he laughed. Just like, it was him. I didn't know who it was. It was a guest. But he came up and grabbed my butt. But in that morning, that morning, I remember thinking, where are the brakes? You know, I don't have, you know, I'm not like control has never been one of my strengths. You know what I mean? So that day was kind of a, that morning was, I remember thinking, you know, 
it, it can't keep going like that. I, and I had, I, I just needed to, I, I, you know, I, look, I'm, I eat chilies. I'm not the front man in the metal band. You know what I mean? I'm just not. Am hunt alcohol t- took 24 years of my life. Can't get back. You know what? Get past that point of, of kicking yourself. I did that for a long time. Five years. I'm sober five years now. And I don't do that. I did for a long time. Cause what happens is it's the ants saying, Oh, what you've wasted. What could you've become? Look how talented you were. What could you, look what you did, but what could you have, you know, look, dude, trust me. I've been there. I know what you mean, but don't let the ants do that to you. You know what I mean? Don't that path lies madness. It's all there is to it. Um, I sent you an article, Johnny, uh, your brother should see. Thank you, Brandon. Brandon is one of my heroes. Do you guys know that? See, BT is back. BT is back. Love that guy. And he's an inspiration to me. I want you guys to know that. Celebrating one year without alcohol this week is the longest week I've gone without the stuff since, uh, the longest I've gone since, uh, I was 12 back in 92. Yeah, that's when the ants are going to go after you about the time you've wasted, the money you've wasted, the relationships you've burned, all the things you've done. Don't let them. That's when you got to change your, like, Tommy talks about all the time, but like, it, get out of the room you're in. You can't, if you walk outside, literally every single one of your senses is shifted except taste. I mean, you're not tasting stuff, but, and that'll get you, it'll silence the ants, but they'll go away in time. I, I, you know what I get right now, you guys? This is insane. Do you wonder what happens to me? I get positive automatic thoughts. I get automatic positive thoughts all the time. It's amazing. That never happened to me. I still get ants, but what I find is now when the ants happen, I know why they're happening. There, there are things that trigger my ants. There are things that, like, there, there are people that, it's like taking gas and putting them all over the ants and lighting a match and, <laughs> and leaving the room. So, and I've been able to be, I've gotten really better pro- partly through journaling, but a lot through journaling because it, you, you have a written pat, you can see patterns because it's written down. It's a dialogue. It's a, you know, it's there, but I, I've seen, I've been able to identify what those triggers. I hate to use the word trigger, but it is. There are, there are certain people that I, I, I no, it's an ant machine. It's an ant factory. I'm going that way because they're coming this way. Alcohol is poison. I bet Rebecca, I believe. Here's the thing. I don't. I'm, I. Ne- I don't look down my nose. I, I'm not. I'm not anti-drug. I'm not anti-alcohol. I personally am anti-alcohol. I'm, I'm bad at it. But um, I don't. You know. And I'm not envious. There, when I first got sober, I was envious of people who, because there are some people that can just a lot of people can just do their thing, party, then stop, and kind of it's not an issue. I'm just not that guy. I used to be jealous of people who were that person. I'm not jealous of that at all. Did my mom know I had a problem, Lisa White? Uh, I think everybody that was close to me probably did. Probably. Yeah, I would say yes. But I don't drink for a week. It's like who I am starts coming back. Z, read out loud in the room you're in the comment that you just typed in. Just read it out loud. And every time you think about drinking, you should read that out loud. You said that. I didn't. You know what I mean? You said that. That's crazy. It's a, a powerful. It's powerful. Makes you wonder, what? Wh- who would you be after week two? I told you at the beginning. I don't know if you were here at the beginning of this video, but when I quit drinking, like I was sober day one. I've been sober for 1,876 days or something like that. Or 27 days. 1,827 days. You get sober as you go. I mean, I'm not getting more sober now. It's been five years. But, I mean, makes me wonder what you can be. Me too. I've been there. I cannot believe the support. I'm grateful. Support, dude. This is remember I told you, Brandon, there are two kinds of people in the world. There are people that are going to get sober and just live a sober life. That's awesome. I hope everybody that has a problem is able to do that. But then there are people that get sober and they're like, I'm going to help somebody else get sober. That's a beautiful thing, you know. UK Chili Queen, there she is. The last five years have flown by. I think we met right after you quit. It's a great achievement. Congrats again. Love you, C. Lanieri. Yes, you will, UK Chili Queen. Um, yeah, I quit. Um, I wonder if I was drinking in London. I don't remember. I don't remember. Quitting is the ultimate power. Listen, I'm a boring quitter. I love quitting stuff. <laughs> That's too funny. 
You got this, Z. Listen, here's what you have to understand something. You are 10 times stronger than you think you are. And that's just the truth. Chili royalty in the house is accurate. That's accurate. My thousandth day sober anniversary is next week. No way. That's pretty cool. That's awesome, Janet. Congrats, man. Four digits. Uh, TC, JNZ. I got to figure out a good nickname for that. I could just call it 86. Love your per, uh, positivity also. Hello to the UK Chili Queen. I love uh, both your channels, etc. Much love from Vancouver Island. Very cool. Thank you for being here. One day at a time, 808. You got that right. You know, one of the great, this is one of the more dramatic things that happened when I quit drinking. It's funny. And I mean, it happened just like that. I used to walk, uh, like it would happen a lot. And I mean, it wasn't like it was happening every five minutes, but I would walk into a room and go like, what in the world did I walk in here for? And I'd walk out and like retrace my steps and try to figure out what in the world. that. And I, I just attributed that because, you know what? I'm getting older and that's just the way it is. I'll tell you what, alcohol is poison. Ted, there we go. So we're Ted now. Don't change it. Don't change that name. Don't worry about it. You are Ted. I won't forget that. I might. I might forget that. I'm going to forget that. But you are Ted today. I won't forget it today. And maybe I won't. We'll see. Replace hangovers with Naga Claw. It just says Diz. Voice Naga Claw. Right above you is Chili Queen. The Naga Claw. Said, Boy, that was something. Chili Queen. I so thought I had you. I really did. If you guys watched the uh, Super Hots, we had our fourth meeting in that show. I was sure. And Matt, if you'd stop me at, at round seven, you stopped us and said, all right, I know we already started, but if you want to place a bet now, who do you think is going to win? I would have put all my chips in the middle to say she's tapping out this time. I was sure you were going to. You looked like you were dying. You looked like you were really hurting. You know what I mean? I remember saying, and there was, I see there's so much you didn't see, you guys. That whole thing. That was a long scene. And it was, they, they edited it down. I was just, you know, like, suffering can stop. You don't have to suffer. You know, I've lost. We all lose. It's going to happen. And man, I just, and then, and then, just like she did to me so many times at the end, they came out with that last round. I don't know, was it 10 or how much was it? Was it 10 or a dozen? Was it a dozen? Was it a dozen? I think it was a dozen. I'm going to say it was a dozen. It may have been 10, but I'm going to say it was a dozen. Seven pop primos that we had to eat really fast. And it's remarkable how fast she can eat stuff. Congratulations from New Mexico. Thank you, Chris Willis. Listen, she's just, here's a good thing about, and this is honestly, and this is something that I haven't heard people say enough about. This is really one of the great benefits of battling her. Shannon, if you, if you sit down across from Shana, I promise you this. I don't care if you've never eaten a pepper before, or if this is what you do, you're, you're going to, you're going to have your best performance. You're, she's going to bring out your best. And that's just the truth. Every time. And you, so that's a good thing. At least, you know, it's not like, it's not like if you lose, you're like, oh, well, you know, I mean, I, every time I've gone against her, I can't be upset. I did the best I could. It's not like I could, I could not have done any better than I did. And she does that. Dizzy. It sucks. She always has that moment where like, that's it. This is it. She's over. She's going to lose this one. And then it does, she doesn't, she doesn't. Yeah. She's something. There's no two ways about that. I hate that I bring out. I hate that I bring out your best. I prefer if you'd stop sooner. Uh, you know, it's it's funny. After that, I got a call from Brian, the producer. He called me. He's like, "I gotta ask you a question. I don't want you to be mad at me, Scovo." He never. I don't think he's ever called me Johnny. He just calls me Scovo. But he's like, "I gotta ask you a question. Don't be mad at me." I said, "What?" He said, "Did you throw that contest with Chili Queen?" I want to. What? I said, listen, don't get it messed up. I love her, but I wanted to beat her like a drum that day. I wanted her to tap out and have cap cramps for six weeks. Kidding about the cap cramps. But I said, you know, I can throw it. Are you I am so not that guy. I mean, I'm nice. I'm a gentleman. I'm like chivalry lives. But if you don't think I want, 
I wanted her to tap out in the first round. Look at the very first pepper. But, oh, you didn't like that. Oh, it's delicious to me. I mean, I started right from the very first pepper. But I did not throw that. I promise you that. Not only that, Dizzy, not only does she look like she's going to lose at some point, but she shows up. Let's talk. Let's be real. What is this? It's not It's not a pretty sport. It's, it's a nasty, vile, just repugnant thing we do. We're snot and just vomiting and hiccuping and just breathing like you're dying and just, you know, and she shows up in an evening gown. Like she should be on a red carpet somewhere. She shows up with a with an evening gown on. You know how demoralizing that is? And here's the thing. There's just so many things that make it demoralized. Like, like if she ate peppers like year round, like she's just a pepper freak. It'd be a little bit easier for me to take. You know what I mean? I'm not a speed guy. I know. I, I wish I was Drew. But she she doesn't eat peppers. She doesn't even like them. She doesn't like them. You hear that? Do you hear me say that? She doesn't like them. Think about that. I eat them all the time. I eat them when the cameras aren't rolling. I eat, like, I'm not joking you. I eat hot, I've eaten the hot stuff today. Nobody's going to see. I do this because I like it. And she, she, and she shows up in an evening gown with makeup on. Looking like, like. It's something, isn't it? It's something. Like, I love them. Like, throughout the whole contest, like the, most of them taste great to me. Do you understand that? I, like, I'm loving it. It's like, sure, it hurts, but I like that part of it. And and, it, and peppers taste good to me. She doesn't doesn't like them, doesn't train, and still beats the, the something in it. It's remarkable, worthy of remarking. One thing I love about peppers is you can't uh, listen. You have to wait till you you can or you can't. No faking. I don't know, man. I've been accused that you're eating those fake peppers. I swear people have said that. Those aren't hot peppers. Like I bought them at the fake pepper store. Uh, have you ever thought about uh, super hot jelly beans? Yeah, I'm not a jelly bean dude. You know, really not. Plus, it's been done. I don't want to do Ooh, I came up with a wicked good idea recently. A really, really good idea that nobody's thought of. You know how it's such a good idea that I know nobody's thought of it can't can't I, i'm not quite sure how to tackle this thing but i'm gonna figure it out when you do that plutonium twice that's insane ted i've done it three times you haven't seen the third one now more than likely you saw the first one i don't know if you saw the second did i gargle it in the second one that you saw did i gargle that plutonium because in the third one i actually gargled it Admittedly, maybe not one of my finest decisions, but it made for a good video. Um, Diz, sometimes my stomach starts to question my life choices. Boy, tough. I'll bet, give me put a put a five in the chat if you've ever said I'm never doing this again with peppers with spice. I'll go first. I'm the honest one here. Who else has? Everybody here. We're all chili heads. I know you have, Drew. I know you have. I know you, Diz. I know you have Dizzy Dragon. You have. We all have. Everybody, every one of us. I'll never do that again. And what do we do? Go right back to it. We're, we're all broken. Why do you think we're all hanging out together? Why do you think that is? If we were all in the same town, you don't think we'd end up in the same room together? For real. If I look, Ted, I'm slipping. I saw the gargle. There you go. No problem. If I was in your town, you don't think we'd end up eating something hot in a room together? I promise you, it would. Noah, you don't think that would happen? Come on now. Code name Viper. You know that's going to happen. Sue, listen. Here's the chili wannabe thing. There are so many people that will, they're really judgy. And if you aren't eating the hottest thing, then you aren't really a chili head. Or if you don't have a YouTube channel, you aren't a chili head. Or if you have a channel, but you review stuff, and you don't do challenges, you aren't a chili head. Nonsense. All of that is nonsense. What it comes down to is this, is simple passion. It's passion. It's passion. We watch the uh, Kentucky Derby. The people that go and watch that, you think they're passionate? They all have hats on. It's a big, giant event. They're passionate about it. If you, if you like, it doesn't really, if all you can eat is a bell pepper, 
but you're passionate about them, you're a chili head to me. And the fact of the matter is, if you love this channel, you love the connections that happen here, and you don't even need the hot stuff, you're a, I dub thee an official chili head by proxy. Cannot say anyway. I like to feel euphoric. Me too. I don't get urges. Nope. Not even a little bit. Uh, does watching a beer ad trigger? No, not even a little bit. Nope. I, and here's the funny thing. Uh, no, I, I never get, I ne here's the, I, you know, and I'm, I don't even like saying this because people that struggle, I know that there are people that where every single day of sobriety is white knuckling it. You know what I mean? It's a struggle every day. And I feel really, really guilty that it's not for me. I, my dad died. We buried my father. I watched my father die and I did not once go, you know, it would make this a little easier. Not once. Um, I think there may have been one time. That's not true. There's been one time where I was like, I didn't. But it's not something. I don't have that craving. You know what I mean? I really don't. Hey, listen, here's a really important thing. Capsaicin. Whoops. This thing here. That's the chemical formula for capsaicin. When you eat a lot of this, it drives up your serotonin levels, okay? And the higher, you, when you have elevated serotonin in your body, it helps us deal with frustration, anxiety, anger, depression, all right? And those are all, look, those are triggers for normal people. But if you're trying to quit something, right, those are triggers, all things chili. Thank you so much. I had that on my arm too. Diz, it's a great tattoo. I think that's my favorite. I really love this one. Although I love this one too. This one I got in the Philippines. And if under a black light, all the peach color here around this side lights up. And all of the pink up here on the, on the edge lights up. And this one here, uh, the flames on this one here light up also right here under a black light. So I got a bunch of really cool work. But I really like this one a lot. It's beautiful. Did a great job. They say that alcoholics are more likely to like spicy food. Um, I don't know if that's the chicken or the egg thing. You know what I mean? I, I know that. Uh, here's the thing, man. When I, when I got sober, they're just the lifeboat. See that? It's my baby brother right there. He's a big part of my sobriety. The morning that I quit, thank you, Tommy. The morning that I quit, he was calling me from jail to tell me that he thought I had a problem. This is a true story. So he goes, I have something I got to tell you. I said, me first, dude. He's like, all right. I said, dude, I'm a lush, man. I need to quit. I got a problem. I'm done today. True story. I said, what were you going to say? Yeah, he goes, we're good. You sound good. And that was it. But he's been significantly important to my sobriety. You know what? One thing that he I learned from him that was such an aha moment. And if you're a, a person working on sobriety, this is something that it was so huge for me. I thought, having been a guy that did everything and quit everything, I always thought in my head that relapse was doing the drug of your choice that you had that you were previously trying to quit. So in other words, I'm trying to quit alcohol. If I do this with a beer, that's relapse. That's not relapse at all. Relapse isn't doing your drug of choice. Relapse is not doing the things you're supposed to be doing. Starting to fall, not journaling. Like if you, you know what I mean? Start if you start, you know it when you get, you got. That's why journaling is important because journaling will tell you if you're relapsing or not. But just you know, it, it, relapse has nothing. It isn't drinking. It's a mindset before. Like I, I've been in relapse a couple of times since I quit. Never used, but I've been in relapse. We're just stress. Stress is killing me to the point where I start thinking differently. When I start thinking differently, I'm like, oh, I got you. So that was a really significant thing. And, and the reason that's significant with me is if you're uh, – if once you realize that, you can kind of detect it and go, oh, okay, I need to make an adjustment quick. That's important. So that was a, one of the most important things I learned from my baby brother. So he's, he's – every video – I don't know if you guys know this. In every single video, 
I do for a long time. I say in the end, right there at the end of the video, at the bottom, the lifeboat. If you have somebody who's got a problem or you have a problem, get on there. It's really important. So, uh, B. Hendricks, I'm proud to be brown bottle free with Johnny today. Got the momentum of a year and a couple months riding with me. You got wind at your back, B. Hendricks. Congrats. That's so cool. But what I was saying was when I, when I started to get, when I got sober, and, you know, stopped using, um, what I learned is that all these people, I go to these shows, uh, all these people, like so many were not using. So many. And I don't mean just from drinking. I mean, you pick the substance. I don't care what. Pick it. Pick it. And there are people that eat hot stuff that are sober. So I think it's helpful. Journaling is, let me tell you something interesting about journaling. I learned, I figured out why I drank from the beginning, from the, from like going back to 12 years old. You know how significant that was? You know what that would have cost me if I went to a therapist? You know how many years that probably would have taken? For real, it would have been, I can't imagine the cost. So if you're honest and you journal, you're, you're, in, it, with me anyway, my journal is my, my therapist. It, it, when I'm being honest and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a writer too. So, but, but when I'm writing, um, you know, and I, the only way to be on it, like, here's the thing. <laughs> you have to write your, your, when you journal, you're journaling knowing that no one's ever going to see it. If you're journaling thinking that anybody's ever going to read this, <laughs> you're wasting your time journaling. You have to, it's, a journal is like, it's like a paper mirror. You know what I mean? And what we write is our image. Maybe a lousy analogy. But that's kind of how it feels for me. Some of us haven't hit the like button and Balaki Richardson, he's heated. Seriously. I've seen the guy mad. You don't want to get him mad. At that like, oh, look, 74. Sit down, Blake. I'm kidding, dude. I love you, man. Miss Anna Cox, happy birthday. Thank you. Appreciate that very, very much. Jumping on to say happy birthday by you, babe. Thank you. So, yeah, you know what? I, I'm psyched about it. I was psyched. I, you know, I, I counted down the days way more on my first one. My first year, I was like 30 days away, 28 days away. I was counting down. I wanted that year so bad. Now it's like I, I started like about a week ago. I, mean, I, I knew it was coming close, but about a week ago, I'm like, man, I'm a week away from five years. I wish I, you know. I wish, wish I had quit a long, much longer, way before I did. But there's the ant, you know what I mean? I'm in the risky zone. I drink too much, but I can avoid it for a week or two. Then binge drinking, dude. Dude, you said it. I didn't. You know what I mean? Here's the thing, man. I, I, it's a beautiful thing. I, it happens to everybody. Like I, before I quit, I remember I worked in a bar. <laughs> well, not really a bar. It was a pizza joint that had a bar attached to it, and there was somebody that I was really good friends with, and they were going through it and they, they, you know, they were going through it and they needed to quit and they quit. And I remember thinking then if I should quit when somebody quits, it's kind of like when somebody around you quits that uh, is a friend of yours, it's sort of like holding up a mirror and you start thinking, I don't know if I need to quit. I never, I don't ever want anyone to quit because of it. You know, I quit because of for me and for the ones that I love my children. You know what I mean? I quit for you guys. But you guys, you got to do that for you. You know, you got to get. Here's the deal. And this is the truth. If we had 10,000 lifetimes to live, it's not like this, I got, in this lifetime I'm going to pick alcohol. You know, the next life I'll pick a different one. If you had unlimited lifetimes, that's a lousy way to spend one. It's me. You know what I mean? So, oh, no way. Lord Kiss Freaks. It's his mom's birthday. Happy birthday, Lord Kiss Freaks, mom. That's awesome. I was playing Kiss yesterday. Smooth Wookie Nookie. I love that name. Ever since you made the Pepper X investigative videos, I stopped getting any of your video recommendations. Literally not. Huh. Isn't that interesting? Ah, listen, you know what? It's really funny. It's funny. You think this is about sushi? Did you guys ever see Monsters, Inc.? It's a great scene. Little Mike Lebowski, whatever his name is. Little round dude. 
He's having a fight with his girlfriend, going with all the tentacles. They had a fight the night before. I thought you liked sushi. You think this is about sushi? This isn't. I don't do this for views. I really don't. I'm sorry you got that. You're not getting notifications. That sucks because it's nice when you get to see stuff. But I'm not doing this for views. Never did. If I did it for views, I would have quit a long time ago. If I was doing it to be famous, I would have quit a long time ago. If I was doing it for money, I would have quit a long time ago. You know why I do this? Because it's wicked fun for me. That's why. It's fun. And when it's no longer fun, you know what I'm going to do? I'll find a different mountain to climb, and I'll go climb it. It's a great movie, Monsters, Inc. I mean, one of the great movies of all time. You know what was great? When my kids were little, there were some of the most epic kid movies came out when my kids were little. So I got, like, every great Every great video in the world, I saw them. And I saw them over and over and over again. They're just like like Toy Story. All of them. Oh, great. I get all your notifications, but rarely with a lifeboat. You know what you can do? Here's what I would urge you to do. If you're, if you're not getting notifications, unsubscribe. And then just resubscribe right away and hit notifications again. And it usually fixes it. That's why you're a good YouTuber. You have traditional YouTube motives. Just make good content. Keep it up. You know, here's what's going to happen. It's going to happen. Like, I... Look, every good thing that's happened to me because of this channel, the door flew open and I kind of walked through it. I never knocked. I have not knocked on a door since I started this channel. And that's the truth. It's not a brag thing. It's just I got very lucky and doors keep flinging open for me and I kind of walked through them. I haven't walked through a bad one yet. But so, you know, what I've not made on views, you know, I got a reality show. I got a spinoff show we're working on. OK, it's kind of a cool thing. Can't tell you about it. But two different production companies are interested in. How about that? So there's a, there's so many amazing things. Book deal. There's you know it's so much more than just views. Here's the thing. I think for not and you know, unfortunately for mo just like business, ninety percent of businesses fail the first year or two. It's no different with YouTube. You, you know, if you build it, they will come. If you film it, they're going to watch it. It doesn't really work that way, but people think that it is. You know what I mean? And I think most people only do it for money and for for fame, and that's why they quit. Because those things, they're glacier pace. It's a glacier pace. I didn't care about any of that stuff. To me, I only care about having fun. I, I promise you. I give you. Listen, the minute this isn't funny anymore, be like a puff of smoke shaped like me. Pring, I'll be gone. Life's too short. I don't do stuff I don't like. Anthony Biatti. Can't wait for the book. I'm kind of, you know what I'm nervous about the book? It's a story about redemption. It's a redemption story. So if it ends on a, on a good, the only way something can end good and really have it be impactful is if you know the bad. So I've shared a lot of the nefarious things that I've done in, 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 in a bunch of videos. If you go to if the Couch Time, if you get a, a bus pass, the Couch Time series has a lot of you know, stuff that I, I got involved in. But so, but I'm going to be writing about like the grittiest, nastiest, worst stuff that I've done and that my brother and I have done. And it's just going to be very, very honest. So I'm done talking about it. But anyway, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that they're like, this has been a family friendly show. I, I have not cursed on this video. Kids can watch this video. And if a kid read my book, see, you ever hear the expression, don't meet your hero? You ever hear that? Like I'm not somebody's hero, or I just I, I don't want to destroy somebody's image of me because they read something. But here's what it's going to be really important. Uh, you know, a testimony isn't what the, all the crap you did. It's what are you now? And so that's the focus of what's going on in this book. Um, will the book be available in an audio book read by you? Yes, it will be. Uh, I don't know that. I say yes, it will be. I don't know. I'm not sure. I shouldn't say that. It's going to be definitely a hard copy and definitely a uh, uh, digital download for sure. Noah, how old do I have my, my first hot pepper? And what was it? The first really hot pepper was probably a jalapeno. I mean, I had a, 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 a pepperoncini when I was like seven or eight or something like that. And that kind of started me off on the journey. But the first hot pepper I ate was uh, probably a jalapeno. You know, like everybody else. So anyway, when you read this book, you just got to remember, it's not the, the shady, seedy stuff you're going to read. It's not who I am now. And that's it. All right. So listen, we're going to wrap it up. Thank all you guys. Listen, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I love you, all of you. Um, 
there's so many people fighting the good fight. I see you. You understand that? I see you. So keep fighting the good fight. You got this. I'm going to tell you the same thing I told Brandon and all my friends that are trying. It doesn't matter what you quit. You're stronger than you think you are. You all right? You are. You just, you're way, way stronger than you think you are. And you can get through things and look back and go, wow, look what I got through. You can do it. So a good place to start is a lifeboat. If you need help, email me. I love you guys. We'll do this again tomorrow. I'm Johnny Scovel, and this was Chase Thee.